uh, the day-to-day -day living, which is immediate. And so if I don't feel good about going to school, I'm not going to go because that's today and I have to survive today. And that mindset leads you to the cycle because if you're never planning ahead, you're always just going to stay kind of in where, that, where you are. Manchester and the communities in the surrounding mountains often present a veneer of affluence and economic well-being. But you don't have to look too far behind the scenes to note that not all families enjoy material well-being and financial security. While there are plenty of examples of students from poverty backgrounds who have smashed through the stereotypes and gone on to great success in life, for many, living in poverty has repeatedly been shown to have a correlation with academic success and performance. And for many, poverty is a multi-generational experience. One program at the Stratton Foundation, an offshoot of the Stratton Mountain Resort, is taking aim at breaking the generational cycle of poverty by offering scholarship aid to students who qualify economically. This year, through a grant from the Charles and Millicent Brown Family Foundation, 20 area Vermont students will receive scholarship aid to enable them to continue their education past high school. The Stratton Foundation works closely with the success program at Burn Burton Academy to help students from disadvantaged backgrounds, and recently we talked with Tammy Mosier, the executive director of the Stratton Foundation, Jason Pergament, who runs the success program at Burn Burton, and Peter Nicholson, one of the school's faculty members, to discuss poverty, its relation to academic success, and what they are doing to overcome it. Now in its fifth year, BBA's success program has grown to include more than 150 students. Its mission is to help students living in poverty to develop college or career readiness skills to propel them towards successful working careers. And the Stratton Foundation is really trying to look at the whole community, community holistically. So again, you see a child born into a disadvantaged situation. So they do have those challenges. They might be hungry. Uh, their home is unsafe. They don't have a warm coat or they don't have a warm boots. Then you add on to it the region of um, the rural community that we have. So now you're talking about great distances just to get to the grocery store or a family that doesn't have a car or enough gas to get to, to take their child to the dentist. Um, then you add on it the generational poverty where our area is seeing not only a sustained uh, level of poverty but increase. And so, which means that the families have been in poverty for a long time. And what this does is creates a sense of hopelessness, where all of a sudden a child does not have the value of health or even taking care of their teeth or um, a hope for the future or thinking that there is anything better. So the Strat Foundation has been funding for dental programs within the schools, backpack programs, addressing all of the issues that are associated with poverty, rural poverty, and generational poverty is where the success program really steps in. One of um, our donors and funders was very interested and compelled by the success program and now what can we do next? So they actually funded and helped us think of the opportunity to enhance the success program by offering this scholarship program. Perhaps one of the easiest ways to get a handle on just how widespread the poverty gap is locally is to look at the numbers of children who qualify for free and reduced lunches at area schools. At the Manchester Elementary Middle School, for example, almost half of the nearly 400 students there qualify for a free and or reduced lunch fare. Up in Danby, at the Courier Elementary School, that figure rises to almost 80%. To qualify for a free school lunch means a family of four has an income of under $32,000. If that family of four has an income of less than $45,500, they qualify for reduced cost lunches. One thing I've heard Jason say is that poverty in Vermont isn't always as visible as you might find it in urban areas. And so we know from studying our community that our poverty rates rising towards 30 and 40% and growing. And its impact on students is enormous, um, from access to resources, um, support at home, and all the challenges that come with living in poverty that prevent a kid from accessing their education. Low attendance, maybe not proper nutrition, and not getting the kind of support to lead them to the successful places where they need to get to. And that gap uh, really seemed to be growing. And for students living in poverty, right, just getting access to the education is what the success program program supposed to provide. 
there's one that I know the Stratton Foundation uh, addresses widely in our community, and this is from a psychology standpoint, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And it's this idea that if a kid does not have their basic needs met, if they don't have food and water and shelter and clothing and, and hygiene and health safety. and safety, there's no way they're thinking about anything else up that pyramid. At the top of the pyramid is like, you know, independence and success. But if they can't get food, there's no way they can think beyond that. And so I think that's the quick first answer is when you're living in poverty, you don't, you, you're living for the minute. You're trying to figure out where your next meal comes from. You're trying to figure out uh, who's going to care for your mom who's on disability and not doing well. And all those things become a barrier to going anywhere else. I think that's the, the biggest answer. That's all at the base of it. And then I think on like a, on a deeper level, there is just a, a, a mindset that's missing, right? Because parents are saying, well, I lived here, my granddaddy lived here, and his granddaddy lived here, and this is fine for us. And I didn't have a toothbrush. My father didn't have a toothbrush, <laughs> so my child doesn't have a toothbrush. You know? But I spoke with the local um, elementary school principal, and we were talking about getting books into the school and early literacy, literacy for pre-K, and they said that for a child to hold his or her own book is something very special because even the parents don't have the mindset and the value to read to their children and, and instill that education and the importance of even being able to read. They just don't even have the language for it. Breaking out of the poverty cycle can be challenging, and recent studies have shown that this effort is getting harder and harder for those in the lower income brackets. Good paying jobs of today and the future are likely to require more skills and education than those of the past. I think also in our town you see the Equinox Hotel or Burn Burton, you see uh, wealth and it gives the appearance of an affluent town. But if you drive around off the beaten path a bit and really investigate the community, you see that not everybody lives like that. When I think it's important to recognize when you address a part of a school population, you address the whole school. So. Our pro the success program is not designed to meet the needs of just these students. It's the Burn Burton School. Because when you meet the needs of students in poverty, that's going to affect the whole culture and make a more productive school. For the GNI TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.